138 in progress. We have a problem. Attention problem podcast. There's a bike there. One old lady died in there. Oh, yeah. cool. oh. Nice. <laughs> Party! <laughs> Mike Feces has more gas than PNM. Potential Problems Podcast. Boom, motherfuckers. There we are. Anthony Cumia said what's up. He said Potential Problems Podcast. Yeah, he endorses us. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if that's fair to say. Knowledge, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's un- fucking cool. He's unknowingly endorsing us yes. by saying our name. Yes, we're pumped. We're excited. It's does, that, a- does that make it fair use, though? Definitely. Okay. Well, that's the reason why he said that is because he's cool like that, so... You know, obviously, when he threw it out like that, he knew it's going to be used for a sound job, right? Well, clearly. Yeah. Or at least he hoped that we would get some listeners, and we did. Yeah. Oh, got yeah. reviewed sure. on iTunes by one of his listeners, and <laughs> it was great. Oh, yeah, and then Ooh, someone yeah. someone else reviewed us yeah. on iTunes. Somebody somebody named Scott Stapp Holiday Inn uh, reviewed us on iTunes, and it just said, I've been through everything. <laughs> 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 yeah, I wonder I wonder who that could be. Maybe uh, somebody who moved to Denver recently or is going to. I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so... I've been through everything. Oh, that was actually the quote. That's the ghost that of was, Scott Yeah, Stapp. that was the review on our show. <laughs> <laughs> we have been through everything. We've had many episodes. We're only bound to go through a few things here and there. That's right, that's right. We got a big, a great big one for you tonight. Yeah, and what about the show, too? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right, Ooh, Alan, you are going to say take a deep breath before what? Before you put it in. That's yeah, right, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's always funny. Right, right, Black Mike, you know, and the girls are like, hold on, let me take a breath. And oh, they like take no, that they, that no. large That's, inhale. Just We call it inspiration. Oh, man, I got so many techniques for that, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice I get, techniques. I got the, the elbow drop. The bam. elbow drop? Yeah, you drop the elbows, <laughs> bam. <laughs> 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 I just, how, <laughs> when did you learn the el- when and how did you learn the elbow drop my friend oh man the, the elbow drop was an early creation um very early creation uh maybe 17 okay yeah maybe 17 <laughs> you learn the elbow drop like bam ah the only technique i learned by 17 was to uh, play Left 4 Dead with your girlfriend, and by the end of the round, when she loses, you start fucking her. <laughs> Man, if I was playing video games when That's I was seventeen with my girlfriend, you know what video game it would have been? A good bet would be like uh, whoever loses gets fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, what? it's good for both of us. <laughs> with the girlfriend. Oh what? yeah, I'm sorry. No, my my bets were always like oral, like oral. 24 hours, or 24 hours, whoever wins, right? That was my bet. 24 hours? Well, you know, that's like on demand. Oh, I thought you meant for 24 hours straight. It's like I got to set a whole day aside for, yeah, this, I, for this bet to work. It would be worth it. Yeah. <laughs> you, both of us have to take off of work. Just call in right now. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think that's why someone finally invented like a wireless remote because around that time, that's when we start seeing wireless, like for like PS4s or PlayStation One, the beta. Yeah, I never you know. understood that originally. I'm gonna use a remote for a controller. Like that's you already why. have a controller. That's why we we can think Sports Center for that. Because who, what guy wouldn't like you know want to be like playing like Madden while getting some head? Exactly. Awesome, right? Yeah. Right. And then the wire kept getting in the way. You know, dudes going to jail because they accidentally choked the bitch because they're so excited. Or they you know? they pulled a Sam Winters exactly. and rolling around on the ground and get <laughs> caught up in it. Next thing you know, you know they swimming pass in out. that motherfucker, right? But it, but that's why you know some genius, some some absolute genius said, you know what? We need to take the fucking wires off these goddamn controllers while we're getting ahead. Yeah. That's the reason we have that right there. A wireless controller. For I know. PS. It's like fucking 15 feet away from the TV. It's awesome. Yeah. It, now think if there was a wire going all the way around the, the couch, going through your fucking coffee table. and At least there would be a way to stop it from hitting the ground. I know. You right? could have it pinned down at certain spots as like a safety guard where it just the, the cord stops it from falling, but eventually the cord's going to fall out from all the Well, I, it depends because them old systems, they kind of stick in there. Yeah. Imagine Nintendo. 
Yeah, those are some pretty durable controllers. Yeah, right? I used to get I used to get like little third grade rage when I would lose and try to twist the controller and contort it and it wouldn't work. That shit was solid. It was built out of like straight granite. This is how much I remember. I had the first Nintendo. I am convinced. The first one that came off production. Just, yeah, Sony Nintendo or what is it? It yeah, came Sony? with a robot. No, no, no. Nintendo's no. Japan. That's oh, Japanese. Well, so it's, is... So um, is uh, yeah. I think it's just Nintendo. It was, yeah, okay. I th- yeah, I NEC, maybe? Yeah, Nintendo Entertainment Console. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. That was the original. I had the Gyrobot. The Gyrobot? Have you ever seen it? No. Have you had a chance to look it up, right? What the fuck is a Gyrobot? The Gyrobot, it, it, it took these like little like tops that spun, and that's how you played the game. So you the, you would drop the top, and the top would have enough weight to drop down and press the button on the controller, and it would just spin. And he would make sure it keeps spinning. And then before long, you would have to pick it up and put it back on the other one. I'll uh, put gyro, probably Gyrobot Nintendo. Yeah, okay. Oh, man, I remember. Whew. There it goes. That's the gyrobot. The thing that looks like Wally. Yes, that's the gyrobot. I had that. So wait, what? What is? What's its? What's its purpose, though? It's. It was supposed to be something like. Okay, during this time, like it helps with your controller. It was supposed to be alive. That's the. it's supposed to be intelligent and things like that. So this had nothing to do with the actual Nintendo, though. Yeah, it did. What did it do to it? It plugged in. It played the game for you. It helped you. You had to use that to play the game. So, like, you have to control. Oh, so those things on its hands are buttons. Almost. It, it holds. It, I think they're almost like magnets. I want to say they're almost like this magnets. This is so confusing. Man. Was it? Was this thing plugged into the Nintendo, like, directly? It like, had to plug into the Nintendo. Or did it move Nintendo. independently on it, its own? It moved independently. Like, see, like how the arms can move up and down? Like, the whole chest can move up and down. So it picks up these big old giant tops that okay. spin. And then it drops it on, like, pretty much the controller and spins on the controller. Why do you need tops to spin so on the controller? Let's say you're though. Mario and you're running and you get to a door you can't open. Only the gyrobot can open the door. Yeah. So you need him to drop it, and he opens the door. You can run in. It's it's crazy. I love it. Hola. Hola. Come on, stop. How's it going? It is going. Good. Sit down. Have, have. Good to you, see you. Did, did you? you too? Come over from across the pond. A little bit. Across All the right. pond. All right. Yeah, I was at the apple store. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. It's good to see you, Sarah. Good to see you too. Oh, you don't have just to uh, get comfortable with the mic however you feel. <laughs> sure. I yeah. saw James fix this the other day, and he just kind of went like this a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he was like, stories, I drank, and nobody else drank. <laughs> that was his story. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. He got really, really drunk. <laughs> nice. Speaking of, would you like a beer? Uh, I have a beer. Okay, a beer. One beer, yes. We, we must be responsible. Yeah. I like that. I brought uh, these weird cookies. What are they? Oh, butter waffle. Nice. Not because they go with this weird cookie butter stuff. Cookie what? butter. So I'm just learning about all kinds of shit that's just... Have you ever seen this Nintendo robot thing? Yes, I have. The gyrobot. I don't understand what it's about, and I don't understand this now. Well, it's okay. It's for everybody. <laughs> I'm very stressed out now. Well, you gotta watch a video of it. If you get a chance, you gotta watch a video of it. Thank you. The gyrobot was awesome. John, do you remember the gyrobot? A gyrobot? The gyrobot for Nintendo, for apparently. Nintendo. Oh, yes, yes. And he had that, that spinning, that ridiculous yeah, spinning spin, stuff. Yeah. It was like, but was the spinning stuff necessary, that? though? Yes. I don't get it. No, it was a complete... Uh, okay, Mike. It was a Rube Goldberg machine is what it for was. For your controller? Oh. Yes, exactly. Like mouse track. Yeah, exactly. So it's like you could get him to put one spinning disc on another like area, but the big thing is he just grip it and pivot. But no, remember it. he had <laughs> the you had to get the other attachment, and he'll spin that little top and drop it down, and it presses down on the button. He was clearly a sign of things to come. Exactly. We're living in a robot <laughs> age now. Um, I mean, of the, the, sure, it could have just been solved with. That's a, like the a first button. iPhone sure. right there. That's the first. 
We were talking about wireless remotes and why they exist. About what now? Wireless, wireless remotes, remotes and why yeah. they exist. Uh, because shit's always getting chewed on. It's always nah, getting tangled, right? We, we You're too totally simplistic, different. John. Yeah, wow. we have a totally different theory on that one. <laughs> Thank <buddy>. you. <laughs> yeah, you got to think outside the box. Okay, I'm thinking outside the box. All right. And then that's, that's even a hint. Oh, okay. Way that's to go, Brainiac. Yeah, I know. I didn't claim to have all the answers. Oh, okay, I just well. said that it's not a good one. Oh, okay. Well, you're right. But the answer is uh-huh. so that you can have head while playing video games. There's some guy in the 80s oh, oh, who had this that. fucking <laughs> controller, and the wire keeps getting in the way. And some guy, poor guy, probably went to jail. Uh-huh. Strangled the bitch with the with the cord and, right, and then they're like exactly right. We got to take the cords Fucking out David of the equation. David Carradine, right there. Exactly, yeah. right there. That's how it all started with David Carradine. That's what. But what I'm saying is, fucking genius guy. Some guy just thought about it and said, you know what? I am sick and tired. Get in the head of having what with, with the cord. Exactly. Got the cord. It's distracting. Wouldn't be tired of that. You know. <laughs> so now you have a wireless controller. We have to thank this guy. We need like a statue. Outside. <laughs> the statue also wireless. Exactly. Also wireless. It balls hanging. Big swagging. You know? Yeah, exactly. A statue, just him proud. You know? I'm like, we have to find who this guy is. Why isn't there a movie about this guy? I don't know. There should and be. And the right? struggles he went through talking to his boss about making the controller so he could easily get some fucking head. Now, I, it's like, I, boss, we gotta fix this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Don't we make controllers here? You know, you know as I say, necessity, you know, mother of invention. If you need head, and uh, shabam, exactly. Yeah, I found out a way to stop my sliding glass door to leak air that ha- pushes cold air in. Mm-hmm. I got an old karate belt and taped it into the gap. Whoa! Yeah. But it, keep, it keeps falling because the tape's not that strong. Mm. And the store's all the way so across Sarah. town. It's <laughs> how, how, Hi, long, how long are you in town for? I'm yes, here. how long? I'm here till Friday afternoon. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice, nice. How's it going in New York? I, I have so many questions for you. Yes, okay, yes. Please. Let's you start avoided the Inquisition, the yes. You avoided the blizzard. Good job. I did, I know. I felt really lucky about that. It was, complete, it was a complete fluke. I didn't even know. And then all of a sudden it was like, you're getting a blizzard. And I was like, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not even wearing a jacket this. right now. <laughs> Yeah, try it out. I will. You might want to get the mic a little closer. I know. It's quiet lady voice. So how how is life in, in, in... And Apple. It's wonderful. I love working for Apple. Nice. Oh, you mean New York? Yeah. <laughs> the big Apple. The big one. Oh, it's great. I love it. There's so much stuff to do, and um, you can get on stage all kinds. And nice. There's just I don't know, it's it's real fun. I don't. I wish I got on stage more than I did. That's the one thing. I, I actually wish. But the thing about being in New York is that you wish you were doing more than you're doing. Like at all times, it's always like so much going on. Yeah. yeah. If you go home for like a Netflix night, like yeah. the whole time you're sitting there, you're just like, what? I'm wasting you know, time. There's so much out there. Yeah. Why aren't you doing something? Entire bustling city. Mm-hmm. Do you do a lot out there? Not as much as I wish I did. Like I, I don't know. I maybe go to. I maybe go to three open mics a week, and I, I you can go to seven a night if you want to. Yeah, that's that's still good. Though. I don't know. It could be better. I, yes, it will be better. It that's should what it, be better. Yeah. I, yeah, shame on you. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not taking it easy. No, shame on me. Yeah, You're right. On you. you guys are right. <laughs> oh I agree. I know. See, Bonobo exactly. even knows. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bonobo says, "Get the funny out." I they know. need to share that. Oh man, you're all. Awesome. I'm mad. I'm mad. I do other shows and stuff too, though. Like I have a, a monthly show I'm part of that's a storytelling show, and then I, I mean, me and Brett put on an open mic, and then we tell, tell us about the storytelling show. What's that yeah, all about? Interesting. So it's um it's mostly other comedians, like a comedians, and we just pick like one theme for the night, and then everybody picks like a personal story to talk about, and then it's like a long like you tell one long story with a bunch of different punchlines in it instead of a bunch of jokey jokes. Right. So um, the last one was about um, solitude, right? So everybody had to pick a story about being so alone <sighs> and then make it funny, <laughs> which was. You what know. was your story? What did you well, <laughs> relate more or less? I don't know. I feel like I, mine was kind of a cop out because I haven't really been alone very much in my life. So, like, I really told the story about moving to New York and how when you first move anywhere new, you're just kind of by yourself a lot. Yeah. And so. That was kind of that. I don't know. But then somebody else had like the exact same story, and I was like, okay, I know, 
I know that what I'm saying is cliche. Like I know. <laughs> I know. Hey, at least it's relatable. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Relatable. Same. There you go. That's that's what I was doing. Well, who did you um, or where did you stay your first month there? Like, what was your whole arrangement or? Well, the whole reason why I decided to move out was because I went to visit Brett Hiker, mm-hmm. and um, the very funny Brett Hiker. Oh, he's so funny. Um, and then I was like, well, this is great. I have to live here. And then. The first month I stayed in his apartment on his couch and it was him and his two roommates, Scott and Greg, who are super nice guys and Scott is um, a really good comedian. <sighs> what if I was like, and Greg's a comedian too. <laughs> He's not here. <laughs> the other guy. Yeah. And then guys. He makes right. giggles. Yeah, yeah. Tells jokes. He, no. he makes giggles. He tries. <laughs> um, and so they were really nice and let me stay there and then I got an apartment pretty quick and then um, started working at Apple and then, oh. Was oh, just, it was Apple just regular. Apple you down. Yeah. That's what well, I'm talking like, about. <laughs> apartments are expensive yeah. out there, yeah. Yeah. Like, I sh- I have five, like, there's five of us living in my apartment right now. And for my room, I pay $800. Wow. wow. What's the square footage of the place? Is it? It's pretty okay. It's, it's like a regular size apartment upstairs, but then we have a basement that has two bedrooms in it. So, um, it's, it's pretty big and in a really cool neighborhood for what I pay. So I really, I don't mind it, but. So in Brooklyn? Yeah. It's in Greenpoint, which used to be Little Poland. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's that all was I my, re- that was my reaction too. Like, <laughs> oh, that's cool. Cool. $800. Did they all leave on trains? Because that would be horrible. Oh, right. <laughs> no, mm-hmm. probably not. 800 no? They right, arrived. Whatever. They arrived on trains. Oh, gotcha. So for $800 a month, you get, you get a room. Mm-hmm. And how long have you been vice president of this Apple company? I know. Speak <laughs> of. <laughs> I, it's crazy. Like, yeah, I'm just like, I, it's all I do because I work full time, and so it's like all I do is work, so I'm able to pay rent, which is what kind of eats into my getting on stage time. But but, but 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 what I'm saying is like for eight hundred dollars a month. You could damn near have a house here. Yeah, I had a two bedroom apartment downtown. Right, it was seven fifty, and at the time. When I was living here, I was like, how am I going to pay this? This is too much. <laughs> and then now I'm like, God, $800. What a steal. Like, it's like, like you're like Apple support or Apple. No, I'm just regular. I work at the Genius Bar. So you, you so basically you, you just make sure like. The, like if you're, if you're, if your phone broke, I could fix your phone. It's, it's he fucking was, working, was, right? Yeah, was, like, was, like, you must be like super good. Earlier. You must be super good at your job. Though. I'm pretty good. Like, is no one complains. <laughs> I, I was talking earlier. No one complains about these Apple phones. But no. you were. But I was. See, I've never been in an Apple store. It might be different when I come out. Oh. What's wrong with it? I don't want this to turn into no. like <laughs> Apple trouble shooting. Hey, does anyone ever come in and they're like, their phone is like locked on porn or something? Or like maybe Hold like up. Let porn me get will my phone accidentally back. pop Hold up. up. Like when um, or they can't up, access or? the screen lock because it's just coded? Well, I, not that one. I don't know. It's just, everybody comes in with different things. So yeah. it's, it's kind of crazy. But it's fun. I like it. No, no, it's nothing wrong with it. Mm-hmm. I w- we'll talk about it after. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about it after. I'll look at it. How do you get That'd around uh, from your job to your house? In uh, I take the subway. Yes. Oh. How much does the subway cost? The um, subway you speak of. I Oh, did you break the cookie off yeah. into the cookie batter? Yeah, it's bit. okay. You just make it more cookie-y. Uh. Um, <laughs> it's uh, for a month pass, which is unlimited rides. It's $112. <laughs> okay. It's not bad, though. No, no. Endless. Then. Easy pass? Uh, yeah. I like, figure yeah. you spend that in gas anyway. Yeah. yeah. Parking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, big parking. Is there yeah, any... Uh, uh, sorry. Is there is there any tips, like uh, anything you've learned from uh, riding the subway as far as like staying out of dangerous situations? Have you gotten maybe? to film any World Star Hip Hop videos? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a switchblade? Uh, I don't, but I have a comb that looks like one. Nice. That's have that's you sure. seen any World Star Hip Hop videos be made? <laughs> what well, the good before the jazz with it? Yeah. <laughs> Uh no, there, you know there's a lot of dance there's a lot of dancing that happens on the subway though, and you won't what? know until the doors shut, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you just hear like it's showtime, showtime, <laughs> and then they just they just dance on the subway, and you can give them money. Oh, it's for money. There's singing on the subway. There's people who just come on and they go, La- ladies and gentlemen, I am sorry to interrupt your ride home. I am not homeless. I am having some trouble getting back. I like, think they have the exact same yeah. spiel every time. 
and the first time did you think you're like oh wow this guy oh wow like, and, pretty much that was exactly me for like the first and, everything first that happened to me i was like oh wow and everybody else is just like yeah whatever ignoring it yeah yeah so uh, how long did it take before you're like eh, it's lost its magic well as soon as i started <laughs> running out of money <laughs> <laughs> the struggle is real mm-hmm. and i was like oh god i feel feel bad and then eventually i was like Ugh, I'm, I'm mad at you for making me feel bad <laughs> was there ever a point in that like scenario where you say now i know what biggie felt yeah <laughs> you know, uh, you know <laughs> that was really one of the first thoughts that came to my head it was not man this is just like on glee it was a lot more man this is exactly what biggie felt <laughs> so like when you make it that's the song i want you to play i want you to play juicy okay you know? <laughs> yeah i'll do that you know, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. When I was dead broke, yo, I couldn't picture this. And then you have like this fucking PlayStation 9. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we're, we're only on the PlayStation 4. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I promise. That's my I'll pinky promise right now. Pinky promise. All right. You got it. Nice. <laughs> so you said you uh, hit up uh, open mics during the week. And yeah. then like uh, what else uh, as far as like uh, what do you do out there? What are, what other interests do you do? You, uh, pursue out there or there i have made it a goal to try as many of the dollar slice places that exist oh, and dollar a slice so wait a a where, dollar. Okay, where have you gotten the best the slice for the dollar like as far as size and quality so um, i was disappointed when i went there and we had sabario oh no think, no but that was because we were on a tour thing we couldn't okay. we couldn't stray away from the okay. group at all in the east village it's like every four places is like dollar for a slice of pizza and you're just like what is it all stand up like area no chairs yeah yeah so you just go in. it's kind of like in louis oh, okay. um, but the actually the place that louis buys his pizza in is it's like 250 slices which yeah. is like oh. um but dollar slices you just go um uh there's like one that uh, was always on my way to the upright citizens brigade theater in the east village and that one was my favorite one for a long time and then I found one that was actually really good, uh-huh. and they're huge. They're they're the bigger than the the plate they're put on, and they're only a dollar. Why? What? That's like the <laughs> what? It's like ramen or dollar pizza. Okay, yeah, who would choose dollar go? pizza? Yeah. That's the best one. It's so good. We, and I'm I, I'm like dead set on opening one here. Like there should the dollar slice joint. How it, it should not be impossible. To only charge a dollar for a slice of pizza. It's, it, no, exactly. And if you did it right over by the university, it'd just be like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little perfect. Caesars might ride on you, though. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you try to put our hot and readies in competition? It's five dollars for these hot and readies. <laughs> you get eight slices. Those are advertising anymore. Eight slices. When I used to work at Dion's, uh, there was a Little Caesars across the street from us. <laughs> And, like, people would come and they'd be like, oh, yeah, my order's just, like, a family salad and a bottle of ranch. And I'd be like, cool. And then I'd, like, look in their car and it would be, like, three hot and ready's right there. And I was like, you cannot be serious. You're just going to douse this in our ranch and just be like, it's the same thing pretty much. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> oh, get out of my dance. Oh, I don't, I, I want to, I, I just got to say, I, I'm, be, I'm guessing that it was minorities that were doing that because it, <laughs> Come on, be honest. It's okay. Well, like, I'm the... wondering if I ever went through the drive-thru at Dion's after. <laughs> With a whole bunch of hot rays. Yeah, I was like, fuck. Well, Nobody I... would notice that. No. I worked at like, the Taylor Ranch Dion's. So it's not like there were a lot of minorities in general. <laughs> you know what? Because I was going to say... That, that that seems like a lot of work. That they'll be like, no, fuck that. The ranch and the refrigerator is just as good. You know, exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's like that. That's some sly shit there. That that takes some calculation. Like this is how I found out how to get fucking hot fries at McDonald's every time. No fucking salt. Oh yeah, yeah, because they gotta make them fresh. Black man, didn't think about that one. Trust me, we heard that from a coworker at work because that's where <laughs> I heard it from. They're well. like, dude. Why are these fries cold? He was like mad at me. You don't know? I was like, no, I don't know. You don't know? I'm like, no. Ask for them with no salt. They got to drop a fresh batch. I'm like, oh, yeah, they do. I think the problem is that you're eating there in the first place. (laughs) Nah, this was a McDonald's was good. This was like like four or five months ago. (laughs) (laughs) Same difference. I don't think anyone would ever claim that McDonald's was good. I think they claim, eh, I was right there. I had a couple bucks. I mean, what do you want, right? 
That's um, pretty much it. I, and their package salt is like that really fine. Uh, it so it's, you just get a everything. couple of those, and it's then it's cocaine fine. salt. Yep. You know, you get that heart attack in like five years, and <laughs> bam. Just like with cocaine salt. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. But is cocaine salt delicious? It can't be. It makes your shit numb, right? <laughs> yeah, probably right? would. I'd be fucking mad. No, at well, cocaine. I just meant the salt has the the powdery consistency of cocaine. I didn't See, mean it was actually mixed with cocaine. I've only done. It makes your cocaine marijuana. smell better. So what I'm saying is, I, I like to eat. That's my habit. Sorry. I like to eat, right? Sorry, so if you do you. cocaine and you try to eat and you can't yeah. taste it, you know how mad I would be. I would make a like cocaine ben snowman just to knock him down. Like, <laughs> It'd be like uh, Ben Stiller when uh, when there were cop when there were cops, you know, Owen Wilson and Ben Stiller. What was that movie called? Uh, Dukes of Hazard. No, <laughs> what? Zoolander. Not Apollo Thirteen. <laughs> no. Royal Tenenbaums. Land uh, Before Time. No. no. <laughs> Die uh, Hard. Uh, uh, Die Hard Two. Let's be cops. <laughs> Jurassic Park. No. Mall cop. Starsky and Hutch. Oh, oh, Starsky everybody was so Hutch. close. We are almost there. <laughs> to be yeah. fair, my first guess was Dukes of Hazard, which is like, <laughs> well, so, like, re- as far as like reboots It's go. a classier version. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you like, could almost convince people. He was putting the cocaine people. in his coffee or whatever it was. Oh, my God. And, and you could probably convince people that they were actually in that movie. I bet you oh, yeah, can yeah. find one person. Well, Starsky and Hutch, Hutch was actually the less racist <laughs> option to uh, Dukes of Hazard yeah. because there were exactly. there were black people in it, but it was like Huggy Bear, right? Is that yes, his dog? I can't <laughs> act. And soon I'll be taking some acting lessons. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I hear when he said. You know. But speaking of acting, like, are, are you going to do like yeah, acting? No, up? I I'm, I'm, awesome. I'm a terrible what? actress. What? It's Ever. really bad. Oh, you'd be awesome. So no, I'll read. Let me read you guys um, the back of this box, and I want you guys to give me some acting. Give me, give me like a, give me like a prompt for how I should act on this. Should okay. I be okay. like, a, what, like an emotion or like a genre? All right, give me, um, give me fascinated. Fascinated? You, but 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 start up. With start disgust. out fascinated already with knowing disgust. you're disappointed. Oh, you're okay. the, you're not gonna like this. Fascinated, but like guarded. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Fascinated, but guarded. Here we go. These traditional. Yeah, see, told you. No, no, no. Come on, come on. Let's do it. Let's let's, Let's let's hear it. it. Let's hear it. These traditional Belgian all butter cookies are made with simple ingredients and baked to a golden brown and create a waffle cookie that is just as delicious. You can taste the old. See, I already messed up reading. I can't <laughs> even get on the so reading good. part. I tell you what. I, want one. I tell you it's what. Amazing. Horrible acting, but you still make me want to eat these fucking. Serve with tea or coffee. Or beer. Or beer. Who would I'm not want to that. see that? Like on, on, on everybody, screen. Everybody, everybody doesn't want to see that. That's who the would answer. not want to see that on screen? Oh man, I'm gonna brag to so many people that I knew. No, it's, it's no God. Please oh don't. my Jesus. goodness! Look Anything what we found here. Don't, don't let don't let Louise Powell see this. <laughs> Except maybe be like an extravagant, <laughs> fabulous pop music star. <laughs> and I figured it out too. I cracked the code on how to write a hit pop song. What you need to do is take the thing that you most desire in the whole world and then repeat it a bunch of times. <laughs> so it's like money, 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 money. Money. <laughs> in that song, that person obviously wants money. <laughs> oh, it'd be it's like, a laugh baby, break. Baby, Baby, oh, baby, 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 no. <laughs> and in that song, Justin Bieber wants a baby. <laughs> and I'm going to hold that against her. <laughs> John felt oh, I should yeah, hold that. Yeah, I just thought reason. that would yeah. be cool to play. It's nice when I had hair that looked like Mowgli from the Jungle oh, Book. Oh, man, yeah, Louise was, yeah, don't let Louise see that. <laughs> we used to go nuts. <laughs> Yo, you see the new comic? <laughs> Fat ass. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's why they shot that from the waist up. <laughs> it's in my writer. Uh, were you nervous that day? I don't. That know. day? Yeah, yeah, that day that we did all those tapings and stuff. Mm. And were harassed by uh, Mark. What's his face? <laughs> Mark. I'm um, just gonna Zuckerberg. say it was Mark Ronchetti. Oh, <laughs> oh <yeah. laughs> it Mark wasn't. Mark Ronchetti. Um. 
No, I wasn't that nervous. I wasn't nervous that day because it was in the weirdest garage warehouse. Yes, yeah, so surrounded by pictures, and we've talked about this with Nicholas, Nicholas. on our mm. on our show before. So surrounded weird. by pictures of Nicholas in various <laughs> various uh, outfits, <laughs> outfits, and one of the outfits was a dress. It was a dress. <laughs> it was very which there's nothing wrong with wearing What I, was his address? Put it on. <laughs> put it on and get in the truck. <laughs> Why did he have they had the me? one with the like speculum or whatever it's called? What's it was called? there a uh, speculum? Oh, yeah, right? Yeah. He, there was one and he's like looking at it and I was just like, "Why who has one of those?" Just... Oh no. I just can't imagine the first request. Like Nick, 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 before you go. Come here. Let me ask you something. Sit down. <laughs> so, uh, would you put this on and let's take some pictures? Well, they were promo pictures because he was the host. It all made sense. Oh, yeah. yeah. They were just weird They were pictures. just odd, yeah. Like, odd. Why, why not a, pictures of him in a nice suit and leave it at that? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> With the microphone. Pictures of him in a, in a dwarf costume. <laughs> That'd be lovable. Why not pictures of him as... At a gym. Uh, yeah. yeah. Wait, wait, no, no. At a gym yeah, with John Travolta. Yeah, <laughs> Why yeah, not? John great. Travolta's lurk, lurking in the background. So this guy was basically Hi, the pilot on Airplane. That's who this guy was, right? Hey, Timmy, have you ever seen a grown man naked? Uh, so, um, the guy died too soon. Yeah. Too soon. Who, who are he we was talking? really old. Who? The, the pilot from Airplane. What pilot? The, the, the co-pilot, the one that blew up. The- oh, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, New York's good. We've established that. Yeah. You, you're eating pizza. Lots of pizza. Lots of pizza's good. Mm-hmm. Um, did you already give out the name of your favorite pizza place there in New York? Oh, there's just a good dollar p- pizza place called Two Brothers. It's the and best. That's right there. It's a dollar. Okay. Uh, over here we have a restaurant called Dos Hermanos. See, oh, it's interesting. Kind of the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, <I'm> anyway. <laughs> But uh, so what brought you back to Albuquerque for how long have you been here? When did you get here? I got in last Wednesday. Okay, last Wednesday. And so uh, you're, uh, you got a lot of family and a lot of friends here. You uh, grew up here, yes? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you have a lot of ties here. Um, you kind of worked here professionally for a few years. And uh, so as a result, you do know a lot of people here. So there's a lot of people trying to... <laughs> Who's it's that? William Cameron Bolt. Oh, Will Bolt as well. Holy cow. Will I forgot William. Will Bolt is supposed to be here. Yeah. Will Bolt, everybody. My Welcome. Hey. The Willie, the Bolt. What up? Where's I call him? Bill Walt. Bill Walt. Lovable Bill Walt. You know, How's it going, uh, Bill? Bill's good. Get on a mic. You're looking good, Bill. Where should I just uh, take my seat for a minute? Okay. There's no. I broke the chair. Ah. Okay. Hi. Jim. I brought cookie butter. Jim. From Trader Joe's. You know what this is. You you had that look like you know what the fuck this is. You know, I was uh, I was house sitting for a friend recently and he had an empty jar of cookie butter. And you sniffed what? it and said, yeah. This is gonna be delicious if I ever so, try some. Exactly. I got to imagine how good it is. And now <laughs> I'm looking at it and it's like I can't believe it's here. Do it. Um You can't I, believe it's not cookie butter. <laughs> yeah, right. I can't believe it is cookie butter. It is. It is. <laughs> um so it's funny, uh, John. Like you call me. Uh, That's you? not Bill, funny, Bill Wolf. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's, everywhere I go, people have to come up with some name for me. Like when I was in Japan, mm-hmm. my friend Bob would always call me Will Cambo. Why would he uh, call you Will Cambo? William Cameron Bolt. Will oh, Cambo. gotcha. That's genius. Like, he just always be like, "Hey, what's up, Will Cambo?" So everywhere I go, <laughs> somebody. I wonder what it's gonna be whenever I, wherever I move next. Where do you want to go? <laughs> Portland. Yeah, there Portland. you go. Yeah. Why? What's what's uh, pushing you out towards Portland? Well, I've wanted to move there for. It's funny. I've wanted to move there like since before I started doing comedy. But I, I just I have a ton of friends out there, and um, I hear they've got a really great comedy scene. You know. Okay. Cool. Um, very supportive, and just a lot of really good people out there. And I love the area. I lived in Corvallis for like six or seven months once, and uh, I really liked it. Oh, cool. Uh, are you? Uh, would you be able to do something professional out there? Would you just do performing and comedy? Would you find a girlfriend that you could just mooch off of? What, what do you mean by professional? <laughs> uh, well, you know, like a day job, like whatever your day gig is. Like you're a professor of some sort. I'm, you're a, sub- I'm a substitute trying to teacher. Cure STDs, right? But yeah, I'm trying to cure C- STDs by um, <laughs> encouraging teenagers to never have sex with anyone. Well, there you go. Teach you the year three years in a row. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. So how do you how do you discourage them from sex? In what ways? By just being me. They just, just they see me and it's just an instant mood killer. They're, they're like, just oh, not in God. the mood. They're like, I don't ever. If there are other men like this out there, I don't ever want to touch any of them. Oh really? Yeah. Oh. Well, that's uh, encouraging. I yeah, guess. I'm sorry, I don't know I'm what sorry else to... guys. <laughs> How's the Dead Things podcast going? I think it's going well. Uh, we're we're trying to. Uh, Genevieve just got a new uh, little recorder, which we're excited about using. Um, it's just, you know, it's one of those things where it's like it's really fun to do, but we just wish we had like more time to put into it. Like, yeah, because you, know, you guys do what three shows a week? Two nineteen. Shows? We do nineteen mm-hmm. shows a week. We could do uh, like four in the morning. Uh-huh. Six hours each. They're six hours each uh-huh. is what wow. we try and do. Yes, yeah, happy game up, Will. Yeah, so we are slacking, is basically. Uh, Dead Things is fun, but clearly we are not on your level. No, well, hey, you know. Quit your job. Maybe. Quit yeah. your job and do it. Quit my bitching is what I need to do. I need to quit my bitching. Uh, oh, the heckler the other night at, oh, at Bacali. That was pretty funny. What uh, what happened there? Like, uh, okay, so this one broad comes in with her uh, boyfriend, I guess, or whatever. And uh, they seem like my nice enough people from yeah. afar, you know. I don't know. They might have been. Uh, probably not people that would hang out with me, but uh, they seem like they'd be nice people. Wait, hold on. Can I interrupt real quick? Yeah. Who are the people that would hang out with you? Uh, Present take company. Take a look around, yeah. Okay. Progressive thinking people. Oh, okay. Well, that. Well, thank you. But yeah. Uh, anyway. Anyway. Uh, so... Um, they uh, that she something happened during. Do you remember what what joke you told when she? What did she say? Was she like not funny or something like that? Right. Well, I, you know the funny thing is like some of my jokes just kind of run together, and especially when I like this is a lot of some of it was stuff I wrote while I was in Japan, but have never really worked out. Well, and okay, but before that, it's an open mic. Yeah. If you come to an open mic and you say not funny, unless the dude is like sacrificing goats up there you just shouldn't say shit unless they engage you right Uh, yeah that broad didn't have to say anything if she didn't agree with what you were saying she could have just shut up and then gotten up and walked away but because she wanted you to be to know she was disturbed she said something about it you know so you could just barely hear it (laughs) sorry this this cookie butter is really good huh i don't even care about a heckler anymore (laughs) well that's good i don't care about comedy (laughs) I don't care about. I just excellent. I'm gonna suck. I would suck dick for for this. Yes. (laughs) Me and Black Mike have the. Most people don't know this, but me and Black Mike have the same mind. We do. Oh, it's kind of weird. It's intertwined. Yeah, we watch the same movies. We we're like Ender's Game. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Anyways, okay. So that's my favorite book. Interesting. Yeah. This is a lot. I haven't read a lot since eighth grade. So yeah. you tried the gift. So it's the gift or the giver? Sorry, I, the giver. I never read the giver. Oh, okay. Um, what is it? The Michael Outsiders. Oh, Outsiders is a great book. Mm-hmm. Angry movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, were they? Patrick I'm Swayze, embarrassed Tom about Cruise? the first book I ever read. I'm gonna was tell it? you guys now. Was it Benicula? That was R.L. Stein. Yeah. R. L. Stein. What's wrong with R. L. Stein? Yeah, that, uh, are you was it a goosebumps? Well, I was twenty five. Oh. <laughs> that was a good one. That was good. Okay, anyway, so this heckler, like, so I think I was talking about how I have really bad anxiety and how I think I'm always going to die, but it's not just, like, one thing. It's, like, all these different things. Like, I'm afraid I'm going to have an aneurysm. I'm going to get cancer. I'm going to die from sleep, sleep deprivation. I'm going to die from not eating enough. I'm going to die from getting shot a gangbang. Or gangbang. Drive <laughs> by shooting. <laughs> totally different things. Yeah, two different types of shots. Yeah. Totally the gangbang was going so well. <laughs> and then somebody came just yeah. shot him in the face. You know? With a oh, gun. No. They totally oh, yeah, did not sure. understand a how A love this gun. I, this is how white I am. I don't know the difference. But, um, <laughs> apparently I should be embarrassed for what I just said. Anyways, so Very. those are my fears. I'm pretty sure I almost made the same mistake when I was on stage. Anyways. <laughs> um... <laughs> So I was, I think. What Maybe we that's all, what she was upset about. Was that I didn't know the difference between a gangbang and a drive by shooting? <laughs> you son of a bitch! <laughs> I've been in a gangbang and. <laughs> it's not that funny. <laughs> you ever had two cocks in your mouth? Have you? Have you? Do you know what it's like to have two guys jousting in front of your face? <laughs> <laughs> no. Tell us. <laughs> it's very confusing. Okay. Uh, so, uh, on Dead Things podcast... Like wait, wait, wait. We're wow. just talking about the heckler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. It seemed like you weren't... It's were a meandering story. I didn't want to so, yeah, dwell I, on it, you know? Sorry, but 
I think what she, we all decided she was really upset about was me mentioning cancer. Which, to be fair, I wasn't... The Zodiac sign, right? She has problems <laughs> with it. She, she fucking hates cancer, especially if they're, like, a rising sign. Which is, that is just, those are the worst people. Can we all agree on that? Rising? Of course. <laughs> no. When's your oh, birthday? Oh, no, man. Every... Huh? When's your birthday? Uh, May 5th. Taurus! I know. BFF right here. Mm-hmm. I'm friends with all Tauruses. Not the 30 Rock BFF, right? No. 30 Rock reference? No? Okay. Was it later seasons? That's okay. That's all right. I'll explain Sorry. it after the show. Okay. Continue. Okay, Continue anyway, so, so we think that maybe she was upset about the, the cancer. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, it might have been. <laughs> there was that. The cancer. Talk about duck it, feathers and to be fair, there was a cancer. To be fair, I don't think she had cancer, so I don't really know why she was upset. But anyways. No, she, maybe she knew. I've known people who've died of cancer, so I mean, it's not that that gives me a, a justification to like. Well, you only knew them until like, they died, and then afterwards right. you can really know. But them. It's not like, well, right. my friend has cancer, so I can talk shit. That's mm-hmm. not. That's not what I'm trying to say at all. But I think that's what you're saying. Well, <laughs> what I'm saying like, is I understand what, that it's not like something they just laugh about. I wasn't laughing about it. What I was laughing about was me being such a neurotic asshole that I think these things. Yeah. So anyway, so she said. So my set wasn't going all that well to begin with. Not a lot of people were laughing. Like it wasn't and like I was, was killing. I was not killing. It was just a lot of polite listening going on. And so she's I hear her very clearly from the back of the bar say, Not funny. And I said, I'm I'm sorry, did you just say not funny? And she said, Yeah, not funny. And I was like, Well, I know that because no one's laughing. Like, that's kinda how this works. If people aren't laughing, it means it's not funny. I don't need you to tell me that. And so Which was happened. actually a very positive way to handle it. Like that's one of the most positive ways you could spin that without being because you weren't exactly being a dick, but you were pointing out that she was, you know, not really, you know. Yeah, her criticism was not really needed in that moment. Yeah, exactly. Like, and I, and I, I think the most kind of confrontation I got was I said, uh, if you feel like you need to verbally tell me that it's not funny, then you must really underestimate my intelligence, which I don't really need right now. Um, good, so good for you. Yeah. Good for you, Wimble. Thanks. Thanks. You was knowledge. So, so anyway, so what was funny? So then, I kind of continued for a minute, and then I heard her say something else. And to me, what I thought she said was, fuck you. Because oh. that's what I heard. And I said, I, so then I stopped again. I was like, I'm sorry, did you say fuck you? Like, <laughs> just to, really? Like, come on. Like, I'm not saying anything. Can I, that can I interject here? Yes, sorry. Please. because I, Only because it's, it, it's important to the story. Yeah, yeah. I was sitting like two feet behind her. Yeah. And she did not say fuck you. Yeah. I don't know what she said, but it wasn't. I think she said something to her boyfriend like, we right. should probably just go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. But, like, that's the old comic thing. Like, and I've heard other comics, like, more famous comics than, you know, anybody I've ever fucking. Like, even. there's anyone more famous than the people in this Well, room. exactly. Uh, but uh, just didn't want to come off as, oh, ooh. No, but, um, no, it, a lot of people talk about, uh, about that, that. Uh, sometimes you'll hear something from the back of the room. You don't hear it the first time. Yeah. Or maybe you thought you heard it. Maybe they're not even talking about you. They probably aren't, but because you're up there and you're so self-conscious and you have to be yeah. aware to a certain extent, unless you're someone who just does jokes straight and doesn't even deal with any of that stuff. But most of the time, right. you're kind of hypersensitive to that. Yeah, so totally. So that's like not something that's too well, uncommon. Well, I think also because I just had this, this interaction with her and I thought maybe she didn't appreciate me saying something and so then she was like you know continuing to like berate me i didn't know but then she she said something like no i did I, this is ridiculous and she got kind of like upset and so then i like continued for another minute and then i just heard her say oh come on and her and her boyfriend got up and left yeah now here's the thing you probably didn't hear if you were back there is it right when she got past me because mm-hmm. you have to in in back alley there's two exits you can either go out through uh, NYPD but, yeah. through the front, or you can go out through kind of the rear entrance. She chose to go through NYPD, so she had to walk in front of me with her <laughs> boyfriend. And she Aww. said very quietly under her voice, she said, not funny. And, left. <laughs> and I was like, did you have to say it she a second to. time? Like, because it was just you and yeah. her and her boyfriend. That's yeah. why she said that. <laughs> her, it, that that it, lady yeah. if you're out there, and for some reason you're listening she to is potential listening. problems. She's a big fan, actually. <laughs> that we hurt. have her on the phone. Patch her in, Alan. Would you? <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be so, I wish we could do that. I would love to have Not that confrontation. funny. <laughs> Hi, long-time <laughs> listener, first-time caller. I just had a question for Will. Yeah? Why are you funny? Well, I'm really glad you asked that question. Um, I, I've tried really hard, and I think... Um, Not funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, 
I think it's important <laughs> to you, listen to your you. critics, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to take that on. So thank you. Okay. Well, we come on. Thank thank you for taking my call. <laughs> uh, hey, how about um, around the table? What was your um, most memorable or worst experience with a heckler? Um, I'm sure you guys have talked about this, yeah. but like, let's let's do it again. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's go this way. Alan, you're up next. What's what's yours? All right. Um, you guys remember us talking about Kevin Stone, the the oh, military God. heckler at Nexus a few yeah. months back. He called me Baldy when I was up on stage. Alan. He <laughs> called me Baldy, and I took it personally. That's okay. the worst I've had with hecklers. Why did, well, okay, well, let's explore that. He called you Baldy. How old are you? I'm 22. Okay, look at Alan's head. Does anybody see any concern for balding at the Although current? Although this no. is the longest no, no, time no, there no, has been bitch. in a few months. So uh, why did that bother you so much? Because I have a widow's peak, and people with widow's peak generally start to lose, like, the rest of the shit that goes around the side of their head. But on the plus side, people will think you're Count Chocula. Well. I listened to the episode okay. where you were talking about how afraid you were that you were losing your hair. Yeah. And I was like, why is He's so afraid yeah. of this. You're so young, Alan. You <laughs> don't waste having hair on being worried about, about losing your like hair. I cut it It'll anyways. make your hair fall out. Yeah. I, keep, I keep it short anyways. There's no point. Yeah, it's just... yeah, but can I just say something, Alan? Like, I, I know people who are balding and who have widow's peaks. You do not have a widow's peak. <clears throat> your hairline is fine. Like, you have a healthy, awesome hairline. Don't worry about it. Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> no, uh, I don't know. I think I don't know. I just I, so that was like the the most memorable. My, in your... everybody in, on my dad's side of the family is bald, but it comes from your mother's. And I life. have head scars, and those spots are bald. So I consider that balding. All right, that's all there is to it. Okay, well, but yeah, that's my heckler. That's a good story, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, what's up? What was your uh, uh, heckler story here? Uh, one that stands out. Well, at Blackbird. I, I don't get a lot of hecklers. Like I don't get a lot of people no. who are like, ah, you know what? This girl needs engagement. <laughs> like, this is like for some reason. Bill Cosby's in the yeah, audience. The girl needs <laughs> <laughs> um, Have you guys seen that video? There's videos uh, before all of this Bill Cosby stuff of like girls trying to do Bill Cosby impressions. Really? And it's just yeah. one right after another, and they're all terrible. But yeah. it's like the funniest thing to me. That's just like. Awesome. <laughs> Um, Did you ever hear his Spanish fly bit, by the way? Yeah, I know. Uh, That's what, anyway. anyway. Um, <laughs> um, he, so it was at Blackbird. Uh -huh. And I think you even hosted the show. Okay. And um, I remember specifically, because I was waiting over by the ATM, mm -hmm. and you got on my oh, stage. Oh, wait, wait, automatic teller machine. Yeah. Let's just make that clear for the people listening oh, to Oh, right. To I show. forget, yes. you guys. There's gross <laughs> things for everything. <laughs> it's like playing porn Minesweeper. <laughs> where it's if I don't click the right thing, and they just all blow up, and it's all <laughs> porn. That's awesome. Automatic teller machine. Yeah. Um, so I was it's over there. Very clear about what cool. you're talking about here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cool. Um, so <laughs> you got up on stage and yeah. you were like, hey, everybody. And you did the, my favorite thing an MC oh, does. No. no, it's good. This is legitimately okay. my favorite thing is when you say we're going to have a comedy show, which I think is so simple and so important because sometimes com like crowds are like, why is people What's are talking? What's happening? Like no one's defining what is going on. Yeah. So it's like. It's like wisps of the show, like yeah. encircling the crowd, you know? So you're so nice, and you're just like, hey, everybody, we're going to have a comedy show. And immediately the girl right next to me looks at her friends, and she goes, oh, my God, I hate comedy. <laughs> I remember that. I remember and that. And I was I like, oh, that. no. <laughs> so then I was first. So you were like, welcome, Sarah Kennedy. And I got off on stage, and I was being like... Good, nice. I'm nice. And so then I was just like, yeah. oh, hey, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. It's so nice that you're here, even if you hate comedy. And I, like, pointed at the lady, and I was kind of, like, oh, ribbing yeah. you gently. You know what I mean? And she, like, flipped me off. Like, she didn't even say anything out loud. She was just like, it's not funny. Oh, and I was just like, what? I didn't even... I hate happy. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you try and make her laugh? I know, yeah. man. Yes. And include her in like a night. Like sometimes, I don't know. Not everybody wants to be happy. That that blows my mind. So she flipped you off, right? She did. <laughs> and that was way worse than anything that's ever been yelled out at me. I don't care about yelling out. Although that one, that same show that Kurt Fletcher got the guy running at him with a knife. Oh, oh shit. I opened yeah. for him. <laughs> oh, man. And that guy yelled at me. I had the joke about. Um, Wait, where was this at? It was at a hotel. It was for a corporate, okay. like a holiday party okay and um 
I knew that guy was going to be trouble because I was on stage and I was telling my joke about Dr. Oz and before I talk about Dr. Oz I have to mention Oprah to give it context and so I said you guys know Oprah and he went boo <laughs> I was like wow. you're, you're was booing Oprah boo Oprah you do not boo Oprah he wanted you to know that he didn't give a fuck about no, Oprah that's a man with a knife on him and that's a man who's going to threaten Kurt stabbed Fletcher's Oprah. yeah exactly it was, so what happened? Well, like the, really quick, what happened there? He like rushed the stage, or uh, with me, he just said boo. But oh. then Kurt came on stage, and he went. The guy got up to go get a drink from the bar, <laughs> and he comes back while Kurt is in the Does middle of his like. Drinks? Oh no, go um, Kurt was in the middle of his. Like, what do you name your junk? Like you name your junk anything? What do you name yours? Mine is yeah. named Sasquatch, and then because um, it's really hairy and blurry in photos. <laughs> it also likes beef jerky. <laughs> um, so then okay, good. So. Um, <laughs> The guy is coming in right before he's about to go into the rest of the joke. He's been asking the crowd. And the guy goes, um, or he says, uh, hey, Slim, or whatever he decided to call that guy. He was like, what do you call your, your junk? And then the guy, like, muttered something drunk and then, like, pulled out, like, a crazy knife, like a Crocodile Dundee knife yeah. in my mind, and knife? then just ran at him and, like, grabbed him by the crotch and just was like, bruh, bruh, bruh. and then Kurt was just like, what? And yeah, then... Sure. Then, you know what's so funny is that that joke comes like five minutes into Kurt's set, and Kurt went on to do like another 40 minutes. What, is, what happened to that guy? After that, because nothing. Kurt he sat down in the bro. audience and listened to he the rest of the sat set. down? Yeah. Oh, fuck. And man. nobody else in the crowd was like, hey, guys, let's all settle. Everybody else was just kind of like, meh. Yeah, that guy always does that at meetings. You yeah. should see what happens when you ask him about his TPS reports. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. So, Kurt was amazing to finish it. Hey, could you change the uh, signature on your emails? Martin Ferdinand! <laughs> yeah. Have you seen my business card? <laughs> Don't even bring it's that just up. Like, That's not a like business somebody... card. <laughs> this is a business card. It just looks like somebody like hit the keyboard with, a, with their whole fist, and then like there's like a drawing, a crude drawing of a knife on it. That's his <laughs> business card. Hey, Black Mike, what's your uh, story, your most memorable? I think Kurt's one? listening to this, too. Yeah, he's, 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 he's nice. commenting. Um, yeah, which one? Uh, just the one that stands out the most, one that, that just comes to mind first. Yeah, I remember one. It was at um it was at uh what's this paparazzi. And um you know, I was hosting and there's this dude in the crowd and he just kept fucking with me all night. He was just like you know, just talking shit, you know. Who was there that night? Like what comics were around at that time? Uh I think Sarah was around. Luis, no, Luis is gone. Uh, T. Graham was around. Okay. Um, <laughs> the West Side, right? Yeah. On the it was West you side. guys and me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All the minorities, see? and and whoever this dude was, he was somebody. He was whoever was putting the money behind everything, you know. Because <laughs> he just start throwing money around, you know, and like uh, like, you know, I got on stage and then like he threw money like in the parking lot, and uh, he's like, "Yo, fuck it." This y'all, you know, he say no, nah, but not Black Mike. <laughs> like, uh, what? What? No, nah, not Black Mike. So I'm like, all right, fuck it, then, man. I go back in there. I'll get back on stage. And he kept fucking with me. He came up on stage and took the mic, man. Oh, fuck that, dude. He took you away. <laughs> yeah, he took me away, man. And uh, it's because his name he, is Mike. I, yeah, he he had to be about something. Cause like, so what happened? So like, what? How he took the mic and did you just? Get off stage? Did no, you pull a Nicky Munoz, as I'd say? No, nah, I went to uh, the DJ booth, <laughs> DJ Dirty Money. I got the other mic because he started talking about me, right? And now I started getting mad. So yeah. I started talking about him because he had the skinny jeans on. You know, I'm like, dude, you like 240. Fuck you find these jeans at, dog. <laughs> You're like, how weird is this shit? Do you go check out at the counter and you ain't got no kids? You know what I mean? He's fucking, you know, like, it's just weird. You know, it's like, but, you know, I just clowned him, you know, threw the mic down. I was mad and I just left. And then, like, that's when the whole falling out came in. But that was, was it, the most memorable, man. Did you, how did you like feel? Out, yeah, I was going to say, did you feel like, were you, like, just kind of fucking going over it and over it? In oh, your man. Head, you know? I, I felt like, I felt like Cuba Gooding Jr., <laughs> and uh, boys in the hood yeah. was swinging, you know, motherfucking, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was just angry, but I knew I couldn't do anything about it at the time, so I just said, "Fucking went home, ate shit," you know. Hecklers uh, do tend to happen out there, and actually, we dug up. You a didn't clip. say anything. Oh, should I? No, should I tell your story, a story, Jim? Um, there's what a few. Your, I was, what with your uh, knack for? Crowd work. You know, crowd work. Oh, You're bound yeah. to get hecklers. Uh, not really. The hecklers don't usually attack people who engage them. I find it 
infinitely interesting that the only time that the hecklers engage me is when I engage them or if they talk to me first and I talk to them a lot of times they don't feel like talking afterwards uh -huh. you know so just kind of the way it goes like they don't they just want to be anonymous but if you're like oh no I'll talk to you then sometimes they just kind of forget you know they they don't want to talk really so there's I think one of my uh, the most memorable memorable um, heckler stories is there was a low spirits show I think I think Jason uh, was putting on a show there and you were there and a couple of other comics that uh, from back in the day probably about two years ago three years ago and there are these two groups of tables and uh, like they were hating on each other like one group of tape like one group was like those fucking people just need to shut up and the other group kept talking <laughs> the other group kept talking and it became that you know the one of those silent animosity things when you're like five feet away from someone who is pissing you off so much it's like the hate is palpable almost and so there was that thing going on between the tables and it was really interesting to me because these people did not know each other in any other sense they're just defending their little table exactly, islands exactly their little table it's I like world war ii but with tables yeah it was it was very <laughs> animalistic it yeah. was their their natural instincts were kind of just kicking in and taking plus they were drinking so that that happens sometimes too uh but anyway i remember addressing them and talking uh getting them to talk to each other and they actually ended up you know not to be that bad like they weren't friends afterwards i don't think they did any parking lot cocaine <laughs> but they uh but they did however uh they did however shut the fuck up and allow the show to go on do you were you there that night it was like uh it was a pretty nuts night it was one of those nights when um malarkey did i say malarkey's we said the spirits, spirits at first no i like... meant malarkey's malarkey's and it was jason malarkey. green running the show okay and uh it was one of those shows where uh it was pretty packed that night for some reason so it was pretty crazy that night but that was probably my uh, most memorable time uh that i had to deal with a heckler or something that stands out in my mind uh who are we gonna take a look at here alan well apparently this is something from a roast i didn't know there was a lot of roasts out here yeah there was quite a few roasts but this was one put on by well uh, i know there was roasts in the video because i mean they're they're on the footage they're standing there holding oh, yeah, the mic. Yeah, yeah. They're fat. Yeah, well, I told you. I did this show. Jeez, oh. we went over this pre-show. Come on. I know. Okay, anyway. So uh, this I'm was... I'm trying to make it sound fresh. Okay. Way to <laughs> fail miserably. Yeah, I know. But uh, and a good try. Is uh, it Eddie Tafoya? Yeah. Yes. They, they had a roast for <laughs> Eddie Tafoya. A.K.A. Tafoya. Eddie to Turtle. Yes, he will oh. be actually... Uh, one thing we want to plug real quick is that we will have a best of... Oh, yes. Uh, for our 100 Best of 100 episodes. episodes. Oh, We've, uh, that's right. Alan's It'll be airing through. this Saturday. This while we are out of town. Yes. Uh, Where are you guys going? Torn, <laughs> bitch. No. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, it's going to be a best of. It's going to be a 100th episode. Is that what it's? Well, what it's, it's kind of to offset the day, so we can have a hundredth episode on a weekend. Okay, so it's a build up. Yeah, it's a build up. It's a build up. That's it's an, awesome. It's guys. an edger, is what it is. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Minesweeper. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, on that, you can hear, uh, let's see here, we'll have... Don't give it all away. Oh, okay. Um, well, Black Mike will be on that. Yeah. Uh, Black Mike and uh, his son make an appearance on uh, <laughs> one of the episodes. Um, ooh, this guy. Uh, let me say the uh, two words together, and then you guys can see who your guess is. Turkey fucker. Oh, <laughs> yay. Guess, uh, Roger Peterson yeah. will be featured on the uh, best of. He told his uh, his classic turkey fucking story. Uh, as in only and he mentions so he many can. times that Kurt just can't get it out of his head. <laughs> I remember like after the first time I ever saw Roger Peterson do his fuck turkey fucker bit. I hadn't. I was barely starting in comedy. You're like, this is comedy. And I was like, holy fuck, Kurt, Mine's who sweeper. is that guy? You know. And he was like, I don't know. I did a show with him a couple times, and now he's one of my <laughs> favorite people. And that is one of my favorite things I've ever heard. So it's interesting how those things grow on you. You know. Uh, so yeah. So this Saturday, the uh, best of um, hour long. Hour long. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this was at a roast for Eddie Tafoya, and. Uh, <laughs> It looks like play to tell. But it says it was at the Roger Blair turtle. roast. Uh, was it Roger Blair? Yeah, yeah it, it was says, Roger Blair. Yeah, at okay. Ro Roger Blair. Why does he have a picture of Eddie Tafoya? I don't know. Just because it's oh. embarrassing. That's oh. a great picture of Eddie that Tafoya, is... though. Look at his arms. He's yeah, I'm not as bald as him. I'll go. I'll say that. <laughs> well, that's fair. That's well, a now. choice. Uh... We don't even need, yeah, I'll just play it. Tonight we have um, a fellow comedian who's also a philanthropist and a swell guy. 
Eddie couldn't make it tonight. <laughs> so we're going to have to roast Roger instead. <laughs> Give a hand for Rod Perea, everybody. <laughs> now he'll do it. Sit down. Sit down, fat bastard. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the weirdest reaction to have to someone calling you is, a fat bastard. Did Rusty make that? Is that? No, this it? is Stephen Hunt's channel. Oh, shit. And this is the one time we're not talking shit about him that we bring him up. Yeah, if you're it's watching amazing. old Stephen, look at that. Look at that. Although, dude, I'm just surprised. Like, how do you Dodge miss? like a butterfly. How do you miss such a large target? Well, if you're old uh, Ron Perea, I'm sure he was telling his wife all the way home I could have hit him if I wanted to. Just, at all. I didn't want to. Just based off of the physics alone, both men are so heavy. They have such gravity to them. Ron Perea's fist should have hit Stephen Hunt this just is like because of physics. This like watching a lava lamp. <laughs> like, I could watch this all night. He shot a... Look at him, just watch him, like right, no, that's the what? Oh. Goodwill to men. <laughs> what? Found him, found him. We don't get it. <laughs> I guess Stephen Hunt finds that funny. No, you know what, the rump Rayad never did tell his wife that he wasn't good enough for her. He just let it come as a He's surprise. Roger Blair. <laughs> <laughs> no, only in America. You know that Ron Perea started at the bottom, and then he sunk. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually got confused between Ron Perea and Ron Jeremy. <laughs> the only difference there is Ron Perea hasn't seen a pussy since he popped out of it. Oh. <laughs> is he trying to own it right there? Yeah. Oh, after that? Well, hey, come on. We're just starting out here, Alan. Come on. So they were roasting Rob Perea? No, that the what that was. I, 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 no, no, no. I, after watching that, what that was, since it's off of uh, <laughs> Hunt's YouTube channel, apparently so after this, they probably had a little bit of a falling out. So I'm guessing old Ha Ha Hunt being the classy act that he is. Yeah. But, you know, I should know. <laughs> I know I should Wait, talk. what was his name but, again? Uh, ha Ha Hunt. Oh, my buttons aren't working. Yeah. Second time you've said that today. Uh, oh, there it worked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm guessing you put that together to probably, you know. The uh, smirch. A, exactly. Which, <laughs> I mean, come on. That was a really shitty punch, too. Yeah. He didn't was, even square up or lean into funny. it. There's nothing like that punch in that video. Uh, Louis. There's nothing like that punch from the video Luis uh, Powell put up. That was crazy. That MC you got. Oh, back. yeah. See that. Oh, you should watch it. I will watch it. Uh, the video, too. Whew, big show. Hey, uh, let's go ahead and go around. Uh, Black Mike, where are you next? Where's the next spot people can see you? The box. All the right. box this Saturday, right? No, it's going to oh. be like February. February 14th, right? February 14th. That's right. Mary Bird oh, production. Uh, uh, the box. Uh, Black Mike. Uh, I know Eddie Stevens. I know... Couple other great people are doing that spot. Uh, Sarah, what's the uh, next? Are you doing anything else while you're in Albuquerque? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think this is my my big hurrah. This is the finale night for the Tonight Show. Yeah. So, uh, what are you doing once you get back to New York? Where's the first spot so, you're going to be? I have a show on Saturday. Where's that at? It's, in, I, it's right here. It's at the. It's in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. It's at the Ange Noir Cafe nice. in Brooklyn. So if, if you guys are there, please. Or anybody listening in Brooklyn. Yeah, if anybody in Brooklyn. We have the audience. Come check it out. Uh, how much is that? It's free. Okay, good, because I can probably afford the airfare there, but after that, not so much. Sure, you can stay at our apartment. There's just <laughs> okay, five great. of us there. Okay, cool. Uh, Will Bolt, Bill Walt, what's your next uh, endeavor? Uh, I don't think... You'll be at uh, the open mics this week? Yeah, I'll be at the open mics. Will you be getting... Uh, when was? When's the next time you'll get really buzzed and tell me how much you love me and I'll feel really special? And then you'll walk 10 feet away and you'll do the same exact thing to James Morrow and I'll feel like shit. When are you well, going to do that again? Like you know, there's enough love to go around. Okay. okay. When, right. when can people hear dead things? Yes, there we go. Every Monday uh, between... We usually put it up somewhere in the early afternoon, like between like noon and three. 
Which, where else can you hear it? You can hear it on you can, hear, you can hear it on SoundCloud. If you go to soundcloud.com slash dead hyphen things hyphen comedy, or if you go into iTunes and you search for Dead Things Podcast, you can follow us on Twitter at Dead Things Pod, or you can like our Facebook page. Or you can go to potentialproblemspodcast.com. Or you can go to potentialproblemspodcast.com, or you can just come over to my house, and you can just bang on the door, and just be like, hey... Uh, yes, and Alan is very nice to like help us set up a website or something like that. Maybe Will you, Will you guys um, host my podcast? Yes, definitely. Yeah, I'll put it on the. There you go. That'd be awesome. Uh, Alan? Uh, what? Nice. nice. Yeah. We love you guys. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody. You guys were awesome. Thanks, Alan. You, you did a yes, great job. Thanks. Let me see your iPhone. <laughs> <laughs>